Hi everybody. For the next little while, I'm going to tell you about areas of regular polygons. But we got to remind ourselves, what is it you got to do to be a regular polygon? A polygon is said to be regular if and only if it's equilateral and equiangular. So let me ask you a couple of things. Is a rectangle regular? A rectangle is equiangular. It's all got these 90 degree angles in the corners. But it's not equilateral. So no, it's not. Now what about a rhombus? Maybe you know a little bit about a rhombus. Been talking about it lately. A rhombus is equilateral. Is it regular? No, because it's not equiangular. The angles are different in sizes. So uh, actually the only regular quadrilateral is a square. A square is equilateral and equiangular. So um, that's just something to think about when we get started here. And there's a formula for the area of a regular polygon. The area of a regular polygon is given by one half times P times AP. <laughs> and we gotta know that P stands for the perimeter of the polygon. We'll get a look at why this is true. And AP stands for the apothem of the polygon. Um, now there's lots of ways we can get the area of this sphere. But we're going to do it using this formula, and we can check it with some other ideas too. Here, if we have a square, clearly we can get the area lots of ways. And it says that the diagonal AC is 12 square roots of 2. And we got to be thinking if this distance across there is 12, let me show it, is 12 square roots of 2, how big are the sides on this thing? And that's, that's got to be a 45, 45, 90. And if it's 12 square roots of 2, then this would be 12, and this would be 12. But now, what's an apothem? Let me draw a different square, just to be clear as I can be. An apothem in any regular polygon is the distance from the center to a side. For example, if I were to go to this side, that's an apothem. That distance right there from the center of the polygon to a side. It would be the same as if I'd gone to that side as well in this square, or to this one, or to that one. Yeah, all the apothems are going to be the same length in any quadrilateral. It has to be here. Give the length of the apothem. And if you know that these sides are each 12, then what would be the length of this side, of this apothem? And I realize that the distance all the way across there would be 12, so this part would have been 6, since that's the center of the polygon. So in this case, the, the apothem would have been 6. Give that area using the formula 1 half times the perimeter times the apothem. I'm going to do that right away. 1 half times the perimeter, and the perimeter of this thing would be 48. Each of the sides are 12. And the apothem is 6. And a half of 48 is 24. So we're really just going to get it 24 times 6. And then I happen to know that's 144. And that's kind of a crazy formula to do this with because uh, you know if you had a square that was 12 on a side, 12 by 12, 12 squared is 144. But I just want to get used to this formula, 1 half times the perimeter times the apothem, which is very useful in lots of circumstances. Here we have an equilateral triangle. Uh, I hope you know something about an equilateral triangle already. If we know the length of a side, we can get the area of it pretty quickly. Let me say that the, every side on this thing was 8. What's the area of this darn thing? Um, there's a clever formula for it. It is side squared, square roots of 3, over 4. We can talk about why that's true, but that is the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. There are other formulas for it, but let, let's do it with this one. What if, it, if the sides were 8? Then it would be 8 squared, square roots of 3, over 4, which would give me 64 square roots of 3 over 4, which would be 16 square roots of 3. That would be the area of that triangle. And you could have done other things, I admit. You could have dropped an altitude right there. And if this is an equilateral triangle, this would have been 60, and this would have been 4, and that would have been 4. And the altitude would have been 4 square roots of 3, huh? So the area of that triangle would have been 1 half times its base, and the base is that full length 8. And that height is 4 square roots of 3. A half of 8 is going to give me 4 times that 4 square roots of 3. Yeah, we're back to 16 square roots of 3 for the area of this, uh, of this triangle. But let's do it with this, with this figure, with, with this new formula. So if it's 12 on a side, I'm going to show, I already have shown the apothem. I need to find that length. But notice this triangle. This triangle that I just drew, AMX. That's a 30, 60, 90 triangle because this angle is 30. Each angle in the equilateral triangle would have been 60. This one would have been 30. So 
and the short, the longer legs give me is six. I know that this uh, apothem bisects the base, so I'm going to work with that 30, 60, 90 triangle for a second. I got to find the lengths of the other sides, and what I know for the sixth, that's the longer leg. It's opposite the 60. What would be the length of the shorter leg? And what you would have to do is take six and divide it by the square root of three. I hope you know that that's going to be two times the square root of three. So that would be the length of the apothem in this figure, two root three. This length would be four root three, the hypotenuse, but we don't really care about that. Find the length of the apothem, two times the square root of three. Find the area of the triangle using the formula one half times the perimeter times the apothem. One half times that, hey, what is the perimeter of this thing? I'm just adding up those three sides that are all 12. That'd be 36 times the apothem, which is two square roots of three. And if we charge through this, we got a half of 36, which is just 18 times two square roots of three. And 18 times two is going to give me 36 square roots of three. Huh? So that's what we thought that there this thing was already. <coughs> we did it other ways, but just looking at it with this formula. Now, when we get to these more interesting polygons, I think you're going to want to depend on this formula, one half times the perimeter times the apothem. We can look at this equal, uh, this uh, regular hexagon first. Let each side have length 10. I got to tell you though, when you got a regular hexagon, let me just make this little sketch and, and make something that's clear to you. If you have a regular hexagon, it is made of six equilateral triangles. And you could get the area of those equilateral triangles pretty quickly and easily, and then find the area of the hexagon. Let's say this thing was 10 on the side. And you use that formula, side squared, square roots of 3 over 4. That'd be 10 squared, square roots of 3 over 4. That'd be 25 square roots of 3. You think about that, see if that's true. That'd be the area of this triangle right there, 25 square roots of 3. And I'd have six such triangles, so six times that 25 would be 150 square roots of 3. That's a way that that could be done. But let's do it the way we're, we're going to do that here. Find the length of the apothem. Here's the apothem, the distance from the center to a side. And I'm going to look at this triangle right there. And this angle and this, and this triangle has to be 60. This one would be 30. I know a side on this triangle, in fact, this lower length there has to be 5. Let me make that note. There's a 5. And if I were to double the short side and get the hypotenuse, that'd be 10. That's true because it's an equilateral triangle 10 on the side. But what about the apothem right there? That's what we really need. To go from the short side, which was 5, to the longer leg, which is opposite the 60, you've got to multiply by the square root of 3. So the apothem here would be 5 times the square root of 3. All right, so I got the apothem 5 root 3. Find the area of the regular hexagon. 1 half times the perimeter, and there are six sides and they're all 10, that's going to have to be 60 times the apothem, which I found to be 5 times the square root of 3. Then my half of 60 is going to give me 30, and 30 times 5 is going to give me, 30 times 5 is going to give me 150 square roots of 3. Hey, that's what we thought the area of this hexagon was a little while ago, huh? When we did it by the six equilateral triangles. So that's a nice way to go. Here's another one. A regular decagon has sides of length 10. And you might visualize that thing, but I'm thinking, okay, if, the, if, if it's a decagon and the sides are of length 10, I think I know the perimeter. All the sides are 10, and there's 10 of them. It's got to have a perimeter of 100. And they give me the length of the apothem. It's 15.38. Find the area of the decagon. I think I can do that pretty quickly. The area of any regular polygon, and this was a regular decagon, is given by 1 half times the perimeter That'd be 100 times the apothem, 15.38. I'm probably going to do some of this with the calculator, but it looks like 15.38 times 100 would be 1,538 divided by 2. And I'm going to come up with that number right away. You could do it too if you got a calculator, couldn't you? Probably you can do it without a calculator. 1,538 divided by 2. So I'm saying that the area of that be 769. Area equals 769 units squared. Here's another one. This is a kind of a nice question. We're going to use this interesting formula in a clever way. If the area of a regular hexagon is 54 square roots of 3, 
and each side has length 6, find the length of the apothem. I go to this formula, 1 half area equals 1 half times the perimeter times the apothem. And if I give you the perimeter and I give you the apothem, you could give me the area. But what if you already knew the area and you already knew the perimeter? Yeah, you could come up with the apothem, couldn't you? That looks like what we're going to do right now. Whenever we have these kinds of relationships, given any two of these three variables, we can find the other one. We make these substitutions right away. So the area of the regular hexagon is 54 square roots of 3. Equals 1 half times, and it's a hexagon. It's got six sides, and they're all of length 6. So the perimeter would be 36 times the apothem. So I keep this 54 square roots of 3 is equal to, and a half of that 36 would have been 18 times the apothem. Since I seek the length of the apothem, I'll divide both sides by 18. And I say, I think I know what the apothem is. Whatever 54 square roots of 3 divided by 18 is, and 54 divided by 18 is 3, so we would have 3 square roots of 3. And if you looked at a regular hexagon, I might sketch one real, real quick. That just makes sense that that would have to be true. If the sides had been of length 6, this would have been an equilateral triangle. This would have been 3, that's 6. Wouldn't the apothem have to be 3 square roots of 3? It makes sense that it would have to be true. Huh? But we wanted to use that formula. That's what we're up to. One more time on this page. If a regular octagon has this area, that many square feet, and the length of the apothem is this amount, find the perimeter of the octagon and the length of each side. I'm just going to go to that formula. Area equals 1 half times the perimeter times the apothem. And what do I know? I got the area already. 1236, <laughs> see we can keep all these decimals, 0 0.096 is equal to 1 half times. And we don't know the perimeter.